So my favorite superheroes growing up were He-Man and She-Ra. My cousins and I used to run around pointing sticks into the sky, shouting, by the power of Grayskull, <laughs> and imagining ourselves transformed into the heroes defeating the baddies. I, I know I'm not alone. We all love superheroes. Or at least enough of us love superheroes for Marvel Cinematic Universe to gross more than $22 billion worldwide. I can see why we love heroes, though, especially now. If you think about just a few of the things that happened in 2020, a pandemic that infected more than 90 million people and killed more than 2 million people worldwide, wildfires burning both far and near to home, and one of the most active hurricane seasons on record. It feels like Mother Earth is screaming for help. But who is going to come to her rescue? Here is where the iconic superhero would beam in to save the world from self-destruction, clean up our human messes, and we would all go right back to life as we knew it, living happily ever after, the end. How many of us sat through 2020, hoping, wishing for once for this fairy tale happy ending to be real? As an infectious disease physician, I specialize in diagnosing and treating infections, as well as understanding how they spread through the body, through a community, and the world. I started on this journey as an eight-year-old girl growing up in Dominica, in the Caribbean, well before I knew what an infectious disease doctor was. And as I learned about the 1918 influenza pandemic, I never imagined that I would one day experience something similar in my lifetime. And life inside this history-making pandemic is unpredictable, unbearable, and lonely. Now a dark cloud lingers over our world with millions of people sick and hundreds of thousands dead in the United States alone with unspeakable devastation in black and brown communities. Now, early on in the pandemic, people would thank and, and cheer healthcare workers for simply showing up to work every day. They celebrated us on social media, companies threw discounts and freebies at us left and right. Essential workers, like transportation drivers, grocery store clerks, custodians, food service workers. Disproportionately black and brown folks, by the way, these folks were all but invisible on the front lines. But we, healthcare workers, were elevated to hero status. Peaks inside the COVID units told the terrible truth, but it all seemed so far away. As long as we heroes, we're putting out fires, people could feel safe. Restaurants, gyms, libraries were shutting down, but we healthcare heroes worked nonstop. We showed up, we volunteered at overwhelmed hospitals, sometimes outside of our specialties, sometimes without adequate personal protective equipment doing the work to stem the tide until the hardest hit areas could breathe again. We took pay cuts, collaborated for phenomenal innovation to preserve personal protective equipment, like ultraviolet light decontamination. We showed up on the media to hold the public's hand and educate them, explaining things as we learned them. Thousands of healthcare workers died. And for many of us, the emotional toll of this pandemic has left an indelible mark on our mental health. But by the summertime, the public praise dwindled and the discounts, they expired. 
Then, more people started to get sick and die through the fall, and like the bat signal at night, the call for the heroes returned. Without stopping to wonder how these heroes are doing now, without truly understanding that we had never left in the first place. So what is it like to do a job to treat an infection for which there is no cure and watch it destroy so many lives? It's devastating, disheartening. Honestly, it's terrifying. As a physician, I have never been more physically, mentally, and emotionally exhausted. We see more patients in hospitals practically bursting at the seams. The people hospitalized with COVID-19 are sick, very sick, often clutching at straws to live. And I am haunted by the memories of the black, indigenous, and Latino Americans who have died from COVID-19 at rates almost triple that of white Americans. Because structural racism, a problem that burns insidiously and perpetually today, has made it so that systems, policies, and institutions perpetuate their oppression putting them at greater risk for severe disease and death. These folks who died were friends, loved ones, family members of people left behind, many of whom never had a chance to say goodbye. Somebody made a comment to me recently when I said that I was exhausted. They said that I was burning the candle at both ends. The reality is that I and most other healthcare workers like me have long moved beyond burning the candle at both ends. The reality is today most healthcare workers are simply engulfed in flames. Nevertheless, we persist. We show up. Regardless of how we feel, Sometimes at the expense of our physical, mental, and emotional health, we show up. You know, that, that persistence, that always showing up bit, I think this is why people have referred to us as superheroes. Miriam Webster says a superhero is a mythological or legendary figure of divine descent often endowed with great strength or ability. Heroes have superpowers. They're inhumanly strong, infallible, and indestructible. When a bomb goes off in their face, they flip away to land a perfect superhero three-point landing, smiling into the camera to brush off the dust. <laughs> the thing is, though, healthcare workers were not superheroes. We are human, normal people who happen to have jobs where we care for other humans when they're sick. Pandemic fatigue is real, even for healthcare workers. Sometimes we don't have the strength to keep going, and yes, sometimes we don't have all the answers. But erosion of public trust in science has compromised our safety. And now, healthcare workers are spending as much energy tackling misinformation as delivering healthcare itself. Yes, recommendations changed and evolved as new information emerged early in a pandemic, but the science is clear now. Yet, Poorly researched tweets and sensational headlines have ignited a blaze of panic and misinformation as catastrophic and dangerous to public health as the effects of the virus itself. So now, healthcare workers have taken to social media to re-educate, 
to hold the public's hand, to beg and plead for safety, to save lives. But are people listening to us anymore? Our message is clear. Your heroes are struggling and we cannot save the world on our own. Vaccines bring hope, thankfully, yes, but we are not out of the woods yet. We don't want or need to be called heroes. Right now, our love language is action. We need your help and we cannot save the world on our own. So what's the best action to show love and appreciation for your healthcare workers? Right now, that action is the way that we show love and appreciation for you. One, wear masks when interacting with people outside your homes. This will help to protect you and those around you. Two, avoid large gatherings as these are likely to help spread the virus. Three, wash your hands as often as possible. Four, let your local leaders know that everyone deserves access to care. And five, do your fact checking before sharing information. And listen to the health experts who have expertise in their fields. Please, don't tune out because you've heard this a thousand times. Let's be clear. In a public health crisis, it is easy to grow tired, to tune out, to not care, or, or think that this is no big deal. I am here to remind you that we're all on the same team. We're all human, and we all want to live. We all want to get through this in one piece, and we absolutely can. You know, the classic quote the, uh, from Spider-Man, the with great power comes great responsibility, does not belong only to Spider-Man, or to superheroes for that matter. We humans, as ordinary as we are, can be extraordinary by using our power to do what's right. And right now, that means wearing a mask and avoiding crowds to stop the spread of a virus in a community. I believe the reason why superhero stories are so powerful is that fundamentally, we as humans prefer to let others deal with challenging and uncomfortable situations rather than ourselves. Maybe we don't think we're strong enough or maybe it just feels easier or safer to let other people deal with it. Assigning someone else hero status means that it's okay if we feel powerless and absolves us of the responsibility to sacrifice for the greater good. This is not just about COVID. And trust me, I don't have anything against the word hero. I, I still love superhero movies. But I do think we need to exercise caution in how we use the word hero in real life because we are the only ones who can save us. Whether it's COVID-19 or another pandemic or a natural disaster or an act of terrorism, there will always be times when we all need to pitch in. And healthcare heroes, healthcare workers will still be here doing our jobs, hopefully with a little bit of help from our friends in our communities. Because by the power of Grayskull, He-Man and She-Ra are not real. As much as I want to fly with Wonder Woman and fight with T'Challa, they are not coming to rescue us because there's no such thing as healthcare heroes, just good people doing the right thing. So, no more waiting for heroes to save us. Now it's time for us to dig deep and together do what we need to do 
to save ourselves. Thank you.